put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. The mood review. Danny Trejo stars as Machete, a former federale, Mexican cop of some kind, who is hired to supposedly assassinate the anti-immigrant senator, whose name I don't remember, but he's played by Robert De Niro. But it doesn't go quite as planned, and in the midst of all this anti-immigration hatred, Machete has to get the people who are gunning for him and get some revenge as well. This was, as most of you probably already know, based entirely on the fake trailer of the same name that, you know, came out with Grindhouse. The, you know, Tarantino and Rodriguez both made a movie, smacked it together, called it Grindhouse, and this was one of the several fake trailers with it, and it was... I don't remember if it was the most popular or just one of the most popular, but people really wanted to see the movie, so Rodriguez made the movie. And as far as I understand, he basically, you know, he didn't make the trailer with the intent of making a movie. There was no done, there was no completed script, so he had to write the script based on the trailer and put the scenes that people saw in the trailer into the script and into the movie. So he basically wrote the entire script around these you know, specific shots, and yeah, I, as far as I could tell, they were basically all in there. So, yeah. This, I should probably, before I get into too much analysis, I will give the public what it wants. Yes, this is an incredibly brutal, exploitative, action flick, you know, there is, there's female nudity, there's sex, there's, you know, there is, Machete cuts off limbs a bunch, you know, the, I said the first five, maybe ten minutes are just him doing his thing, and that's, you know, it, that's what we wanted to see from the movie, you know, so Rodriguez makes a very smart decision there. The, you know, throughout the movie, there are quite a few action scenes, and he does, you know, he, he has it be with different characters and, you know, different kind of situations sometimes, so it doesn't really grow stale, and it's, you know, it's a fairly nicely paced film. I mean, it is only roughly 90, maybe 95 minutes, you know, not kind of the credits, so, <laughs> it's it's may, maybe not difficult to make it enduring, but still, you know, you basically care throughout the entire film. The sort of little gags are, you know, there are several very nice ones, at least. There are several things that you are going to be talking about after having seen the movie. And, yeah, the basic, you know, it, it goes into these themes of this, excuse me, there, you know, this anti-immigration kind of feelings, and, you know, it takes place in, I think, 
Texas, basically. So you know, yeah. Anyway, it's it's right across the border from Mexico, anyway. And you know, basically, there, are, you know, we got Robert De Niro, the senator, and he has this, you know, there's this uh, friend of his, played by Don Johnson. I think the character is Vaughn, and you know, basically, he. Yeah, he, you know, he, he just, he likes shooting immigrants. That's not a spoiler at all. You, you know, it's revealed within the first 20 minutes or so. And, yeah, so he, you know, you, you have these people who really hate the immigrants, and then you have the immigrants who are just trying to get by, and there's also this underground network, very creatively titled, the network, and I think also the like the the federal investigation into it is also called network, or it was called something really obvious at least. Anyway, yeah, there's this network that is helping illegal immigrants, you know, get into the country and get a job, get to you know, get taken care of, and. Yeah, I, I suppose it's basically about time to get into the real analysis. Rodriguez overwrites this, the way he overwrote Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Now, this movie is not anywhere near as bad as Once Upon a Time in Mexico. It is nowhere near as confused and muddled. In this movie, you can follow the plot in just one viewing. You know, and like I said before, you do basically care, you know, even though... I'll, I'll get into that a little more, but you know, the basic characters are not that engaging and not that compelling. I mean, there's there are basically interesting things, but yes, you know, it, there is less going on and I suppose the... Yeah, it's, it's just, it's less messy. And the action is much better edited. You know, th this is still very, very swiftly edited, but it is not quite as, quite as swiftly edited. It, you know, I, I don't know exactly what happened, but somewhere after Once Upon a Time in Mexico, because he doesn't mess it up in the Sin City either. So, you know, sometime after Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Rodriguez realized people need a moment to breathe. Even if it's action, even if it's going really fast, you know, you can't just constantly be throwing stuff at the screen, at the, the audience. We, we need just a little bit of breathing room. This movie gives us that in spite of it being very action-packed. And it is very action-packed. I should maybe also say, this movie is completely leave your brains at the door entertainment. There is no way you know, the the plot twists and the basic way things go. It is not a rational film, you know. There, there, it is not a logical sequence of events, basically. You know, there, there is a basic, you know, you know, one scene leads to the next, but there are a bunch of little, you know, decisions that just, you know, yeah, come completely out of nowhere and don't really make sense. And often they don't really have an impact either because, again, Rodriguez makes these really sudden decisions where it's kind of, you know, surprising us. He's actually kind of going a little bit into Paul W. Anderson territory here. I, I, I'm sorry, Rob. I, I love your stuff, a lot of it at least, but you're, you're moving dangerously close to Paul W. Anderson. <sighs> Yeah, you know, you have these things where it's like, oh, well, I guess I didn't see that coming. That was surprising, but it makes no sense, basically. Now, so, so yes, you know, there, there are a bunch of different ideas here, and there isn't really that much room for any of them to completely be fleshed out. So it, you know, doesn't completely... And there's also just... I don't know, it's, it seems a bit too easy for you know, the bad guys, to find... 
Well, it's bordering on spoiler territory, so I won't. Now, the characters, they are potentially interesting in, you know, in a movie that devoted more time to them or had better actors. Y you know, it, it would be solid. Very much so. Now, I, I should, you know, give some details because they, they are interesting ideas. Now, yeah, Machete himself, Danny Trejo, I think this might be his first starring role. I, I don't really know of any other movie. He's usually a side character. And it kind of does show. He doesn't really have the... What's it called? Yeah, yeah charisma, basically. You know, you, when you watch him in other movies, you might, like, think, I'd like to see him in a starring role. But after seeing this, you're probably realizing... I really need to monitor my thoughts more, because that was a stupid one. Yeah, he just doesn't quite have... But, you know, he's not, like, annoying. You know, there, there, are, there are far worse action heroes out there. I'd say the biggest problem is probably his age, because some of the stuff is quite clearly edited to hide the fact that Danny Trejo just can't completely pull off this stuff anymore. And I don't blame him. He's, you know, the dude's like, I don't know, 60? So, yeah. Still, I mean, I don't doubt that he could kill me just by looking at me, but, you know, I don't think he can find me, so I feel safe. Now, yes, so, um, he has this brother, played by Chich Marin, who finally gets to be cool in any movie or at least a Robert Rodriguez movie. I haven't seen all his movies, so I couldn't tell if he's ever been cool before. But he's this, you know, he's Machete's brother, and he's a priest. And, yeah, that's... I suppose that's all I should divulge about him. We have Michelle Rodriguez as this... Yeah, it's not really a spoiler. She's basically this, what's it called? She's like the leader, basically, of the, you know, the network, which kind of doubles as an army for a revolution. <laughs> yeah, I bet you didn't think that the people tending to your garden was were secretly, you know, about to start a revolution, you know. Anyway, she... They actually name her She, although I think her actual, actual character name is Luth. I hope I pronounced that right. But, you know, she has... You know, she... There is this other figure called She, or some of them pronounce it She, but it's apparently She. And they actually do this thing where, you know, someone is just talking about another character and they say she, and then the character they're talking to thinks it's she as in the leader of the... because there's like an... there's an accent mark over the E, so it's not literally the word she. But yeah, that, that just... I, Robert really needs a writing partner. Badly. We have Jessica Alba as this ICE, I think it was, agent, and the girl can't act, but I don't know, she gets some cool moments, at least, you know, and yeah, her her character's fine. She She's not annoying, as she has been in other movies, including other Robert Rodriguez movies. She's, she's more tolerable here than Sin City. We have Steven Seagal as Mexican drug lord, and it actually kind of, you know, he can pass for Mexican, you know, and yeah, he's, he's enjoyable enough, you know, I, I can't usually stand Seagal, so yeah, but he was fine, and yeah, I think that pretty much covers all of the major characters. Now, the... I'm 
I'm not sure there's much other than the soundtrack I got. It's the, the music tends to be really great. And, you know, just... And some of it, at least, really fits with this whole, you know, 70s, 80s, you know, exploitative B-movie action flick kind of feel that it's, you know, somewhat going for. It's nowhere near... I, I haven't watched either of Grand House feature yet. I, I am getting to them, I swear. But this one doesn't really go for the kind of that aesthetic quite as much. You know, it doesn't have the film grain and the, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the various, you know, after effects of the, a film having been played, you know, countless times as, you know, was the, as happened with the Grindhouse films. I suppose that more or less covers it. So, yeah, you know, it's it's enjoyable if you just, you know, if you know what you're in for and you, yeah, want to watch at least once, but I don't know, not necessarily one to really, you know, it's not that it couldn't have been, and that's really what, it, you know, I'd, I'd say Desperado is much more rewatchable, and that's also, you know, pretty, you know, straight, just dumb entertainment, you know, there isn't much to that one either. And Sin City is infinitely more watchable, and, well, you know, that also has some, well, I suppose it's debatable, I need to watch that movie again. Anyway, yeah, it just, it's indulgent. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.